Just how far has Cam Akers' dynasty value fallen after a terrible week one? We'll be talking about that and more on today's Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com backslash locked on NFL. Welcome to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, how's it going today? <laughs> it's going well, man. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm good. That was a mouthful there. We got okay. through it, though, and we're ready to talk some dynasty fantasy football. We are uh, we're, we're through week one. We're looking ahead to week two. And on these Wednesday shows, we are going to focus on player value. Sometimes we'll talk new ADP. That's what we did last week. We gave you that yeah. look at the new September ADP. Sometimes we'll do our dynasty value studies. Those will be our two primary ways of talking about player value in dynasty leagues. And we're talking dynasty value study uh, this week. I remember uh, essentially a year ago, Matt, do you remember who our first dynasty value study was on last season? Wow, I do not. That's some good trivia there. Yeah, 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 really, really uh, <laughs> interesting here. We we kind of uh, cursed this guy. We did Tyson Williams, uh, of wow. course. The, okay. the Baltimore running back had a had a nice uh, early yeah, season, yeah. and uh, the dynasty community went a little crazy for him. Of course, that was uh, that was kind of all for naught. Uh, we're going the other direction today. We're, we're going to look and focus on a player who's losing value here early in the season. We're talking Cam Akers, the Rams running back. Of course, this is a guy who a little over a year ago, you know, we could say 15 months ago, essentially, was a first round dynasty startup pick. Yes. He was coming off an impressive rookie season especially the end of that rookie season when uh, he got over uh, over an injury, came back and, and had a really strong uh, four to five games to end his rookie season. And that was enough for dynasty managers. We were sold as a whole and, and moved this young running back all the way up into the first round of dynasty startups. Uh, and we know what happened from there. Suffered that, that terrible injury, uh, cost him uh, the season, or at least that's what we thought. And ultimately, of course, came back uh, late in the season and, and towards that Super Bowl run that the uh, the Rams made, and, and honestly, just was not all that impressive. No. But we kind of we kind of got wrapped up in just how amazing it was that he came back. This was an injury that running backs often didn't come back from at all, let alone in the same season. So just as as impressive as it was to get back on the field, that was kind of all we needed for Cam Akers' value to steadily rise throughout the offseason. 100%. And I really liked him coming out of Florida State. There was like five good backs that year, and I thought he was yeah. right in the mix with all those guys, Dobbins, Taylor Swift, et cetera. And um, he – had very poor blocking at Florida State and made the most of it, to say the least. Smooth mover, but explosive. That Those are rare combination. Goes to the Rams, good landing spot. Really, as you said, was a strong, strong prospect for a while. And even though he did come back and we were all enamored with that, the, the production just wasn't there last year in the playoffs. But you could also excuse it that they were playing some of the toughest run defenses in the league. And, you know, he's just fresh off injury. And at that point, I assumed he'd be the Rams lead back in week one. He sure wasn't. I mean, he was like the clear two. The clear two and honestly could have been even worse. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we, we saw the rookie Kyron Williams, who was getting a little bit of hype heading into into week one uh, he suffered an injury that actually landed him on the injured reserve uh, if he was healthy I mean there's there's a chance acres could be the the, the third back in this yeah, offense 
Uh, ultimately, Cam Akers did serve as the primary backup behind Daryl Henderson in week one. Only got three carries, did not gain a yard on those three uh, total. Played just 12 snaps in the game. 67 total offensive snaps for the Rams. He played 12. Uh, and, and for comparison, Daryl Henderson played 55 out of 67. Henderson ended up with 13 rushes for 47 yards, five catches for 26 yards, and Cam Akers put up a big old goose egg. Hmm. I feel like, and, and I, maybe this is uh, maybe this is obvious. Maybe there's nobody else even close. From a dynasty standpoint, Cam Akers was the big loser of week one. Is, is anybody Ooh. else even in that range? Wow. I mean, I'm thinking of like Dak Prescott's injury in some way, shape, or form, or you know, Dallas stuff was bad. Maybe Trey Lance took a small step back, but I, I'm, I'm struggling. I mean, I think it is Akers as a slam dunk. Yeah, Mitchell and Prescott injuries going to yeah. keep them out for a couple months. Uh, Allen Robinson, his teammate, didn't exactly light it up. Right. There were there were sev several guys who struggled. We kind of talked about that at the end of uh, yesterday's show. Some of those players we might be worried about, but I, I don't think any uh, outdoes Cam Akers, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. Um, and the whole world saw it. I mean, every eye in America was on it. It wasn't like there's other games on, you know, bad. Yeah, yeah, that made it even worse. <laughs> right. Um, just as a, let, let's take a little step back here and, and kind of give an overview of what we do in these dynasty value studies. Uh, we, we really try to nail down the exact current value of a player. And typically uh, it, it's going to be a player like this, a player who is going through a value change it might be a, a riser or someone who's really impressing and, and, and surprising, or it could be like acres, a player who is losing value. And, um, and, and we're just trying to decide what to do with this guy, with this new value. Is he a buy low? Is he a guy who you take what you can get? So we look at several different uh, data points. We go through some different exercises here. We talk about what we've seen on the field. That's definitely Matt's specialty. Uh, so we'll look at ADP. We'll look at the ranking, the current ranking of the player. We'll do that very soon with Cam Akers. We'll talk about some recent dynasty trades that have gone down with that player. And then my favorite part is a series of Twitter polls that I put together comparing the player in question to other players at his position. And this really helps us uh, essentially form a ranking of uh, a group of players at that position centered around the key topic, and of course today, that is Cam Akers. We're going to do all of those things right after this. Guys, I've told you about LinkedIn Jobs before, and it doesn't really apply to my profession so much, but I have some buddies that have used LinkedIn Jobs recently, and a good friend of mine just got hired through through the, through the LinkedIn um, because of them. And so it's been really great. Uh, as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire in all cylinders. And that's exactly what LinkedIn Jobs is here to do and, and find, it, find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Um, create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the lar world's largest professional network of over 810 million people, 810 million. Then your ad and your and the purple hiring frame on your LinkedIn profile to spread the word, so that you're hiring, so your network can find you with the right people to hire. Simple tools, you know, like um, simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience, so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So here's what I want you to do, please. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly four or 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
We are back. We're talking Cam Akers today, really digging into his dynasty value. It is certainly changing, and it's not changing for the good. No. Uh, we've, we've got a couple of data points here, and these are going to be changing as well. We'll start with that ADP. Uh, again, this is September ADP collected at the very beginning of the month before that week one game. So yeah. Very subject to change for a negative absolutely. way. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. In this case, this this data um, or, or this specific data point with Cam Akers is is definitely out of date because uh, we know if we're doing a startup right now, starting one today here between week one and week two, this is not where Cam Akers is going. But <laughs> no. I, I do think this this data will give us kind of some good perspective. How far should he fall? Where was he? Just a week ago, just a couple of weeks ago, where was he being valued? To I think that it's question, good to remember that, you know, this was only a week ago or two weeks right. ago. So let's not kill the guy for one week, you know? Right. So Dynasty ADP for Cam Akers, he was uh, and, and technically is at the moment, the RB 15, 35 overall. So just inside that third round, some players being drafted around Cam Akers included Drake London. Deontay Johnson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Justin Herbert. Uh, you look at his DLF ranking from Dynasty League Football. He was the RB16, so the ranking is kind of in line with the ADP. Again, we expect both of those to fall, uh, you know, really, really oh, just yeah. any time now and fall dramatically, right. Uh, the running backs ranked around Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, Travis Etienne, uh, a couple other players you could argue are losing value currently. They were just ahead of Akers. And Kenneth Walker, Aaron Jones were just behind Akers. So that's kind of the value where or the range where he was being valued. How how far does he fall? It's it's obvious he's going to fall. Uh, but from RB16, what's what's reasonable? I mean, Josh Jacobs is 25, Damian Harris is 35. Is that the range we're talking? I think and that's the neighborhood. Like, would you rather have him or Gibson, you know, who's got a little bit of a jolt up but was falling like a stone? I mean, I think those are the type of names you need to talk about with him. Damien Harris is a good one. You know, like, I absolutely think he could redeem himself, and we can't forget that the Rams game that we all saw was probably their worst outing of the year. I mean, hopefully for them. Um, yeah. you know, none of their guys had played in the preseason. I don't think Henderson's the most insane roadblock for Acres to jump back over. So I wouldn't drop him dramatically, but obviously where we just talked about where he ranks among running backs and overall is nowhere close to his value right now. Well, we'll, we'll look at some, some trades that have gone down in, in just a moment, but these are better indicators. I think. I, I think so as well. Yeah. But when you're when you're trying to decide what to do with Cam Akers or a player like that whose value is changing suddenly, uh, I mean, it really comes down to what your expectations are for the player in the future. We have seen him as the Rams starter uh, mm -hmm. only for a short period of time. Do you, do you think he can regain that role? Is is that reasonable based on what you saw on the field? Unfortunately. We didn't see a lot, but yeah, I don't to go off of right. You, what what you saw on the field? We heard the comments from Sean McVay. They were not uh, not necessarily positive when it comes to Cam Akers either. Um, it, is this guy going to be a not a fantasy starter? Is he just going to be a starting running back in the league by the end of the season? A year from now, what do you see as his future? Yeah, I think it's a very tough one, and I'm not avoiding the question. It's just, I I think it's very possible that he becomes a starter again, maybe as soon as this week. You know, I mean, Henderson didn't blow me away. Nothing about that offense outside of Cooper Cup and a little bit of Higby I thought was positive in any way. Um, judging the way he moves is basically impossible because they don't play anybody in the preseason, and he barely played in this game. I'm hoping that he looked better than he did in the playoffs last year, but who's to say, um, you know, drafting the, the Notre Dame kid who's good in protection and, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, using him as a two are not glowing endorsements for him at all, but I don't think it's a difficult obstacle for him to become the one. And that could be in the, the range of outcomes. 
Well, well let's veer off just a little bit because I, okay. I want to hear your thoughts on this. I, I saw a stat that teams that did not play their key players in preseason, especially their quarterbacks, yeah, were three and eight, I believe was the record in week one. Those teams wow. were three and eight. Uh, the, the Rams, of course, w- one of the teams that took the loss. Uh, and the and the Rams really and Sean McVay are, are the ones that kind of started this trend of yeah, we're not yeah. playing our guys at all. Of course, it used to be week one, week four of the preseason. You didn't really see any any key guys. Week two, maybe we'd see them a little bit. Week three, they'd play at least a half, sometimes the full game. Mm-hmm. And, and Sean McVay came in a few years ago and said we're not we're not going to play any of our guys at all in the preseason. We're not risking that. And so many other teams have followed that lead. I mean, I made the joke on Twitter. I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. That this past week felt like it felt like a week of preseason fo- uh, yeah. football. Uh, I mean, there was lots of sloppy play. The defense is, uh, in almost every case, certainly ahead of the offenses overall. It, do you see things like this slow starts for those teams and, and those players? Do you see that changing how teams view the preseason? You know, next year potentially. Maybe. I do think the league has does not have that blueprint that they used to, like you said. You know, and they're down to three. There's 17 games. There's more data out there in terms of, you know, physiological type things and, you know, sports science and things like that. So I'm sure the Rams will take the exact same approach. I mean, I'm sure they look at it like, yeah, we may take a lump or two like they did last Thursday. But we won the Super Bowl doing this, and we yeah. need to be as fresh as possible. If it, we, I'm not putting Aaron Donald in jeopardy, even if it means stubbing my toe a little bit in the first month of the season or first two weeks of the season. I think the betting community needs to be all over teams that rested everyone in the preseason and bet against them like crazy. You know, like Steelers, Bengals. Uh, the other night, Denver versus Seattle. I mean, a lot of the teams mm-hmm. like the Giants, the Bears – um Houston you know the the bo- the bottom of the league type of teams the Falcons that had a lot to work on came out much fresher even though they had lesser talent yeah very good point the Rams obviously uh this has worked for them yeah uh, right. big picture pretty well and and we are still just talking about one game the beginning of the season so uh, maybe we're we're assuming too much there uh let's look at some recent trades really quickly involving Cam Akers I think it was noticeable when, when we pull these trades, we look at actual dynasty leagues, trades that have gone down and we use the trade finder tool on dynasty league football since that game. And we're, uh, we're uh, nearly a week away or a week past that, that debut game for cam Akers and for the Rams, there have only be, have only been three trades involving cam Akers total. Now, if you look for, you know, a typical player, uh, if you look for C.D. Lamb, if you look for um, Trey Lance, you're going to see double-digit trades for those yeah, players yeah. because we're we're essentially looking at every dynasty league that we can find on my fantasy league. There are hundreds of them. Three trades for Cam Akers. That's so crazy. But it that, makes sense. That's, Nobody's well, giving I, away for nothing. Right. Well, mostly. Almost Most, nobody. Well, because yeah, we'll get to that, yeah. The very first trade we found was Cam Akers for a 2025 third round rookie pick. And you don't need Matt or myself to tell you don't do that trade. You're not <laughs> right, getting right. you're not getting anything there and uh, maybe a third rounder a third round rookie pick pick turns into something but definitely nothing you would count on. No reason to do a trade like that. I wouldn't Matt, even do it for next year's third round, let alone a 2025 or and the only way I could even make, see that that makes the slightest bit of sense is whoever had Cam had such a loaded roster that they had to cut somebody so that they could get a kicker or a defense or something on their roster, and he was their worst guy. That's the only way this would make the slightest bit of sense. Yeah, there, we we definitely lose some context in in these trades as, right, you, right. as we're just viewing the report. But these other two are interesting, though. Yeah, it's it's hard to swallow that one. Would you trade Cam Akers for a future second round rookie pick? Would you take a 2023 second rounder for him right now? I think so. Oh, 
I, 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 I thought I'd be I higher would... on him than consensus, but yeah, future seconds kind of nice. Well, d- next year it looks like it would be nice. I, I yeah, think so I, I mean, would hold out. Backs, right. Yeah, I think I would hold out for more, but mm-hmm. you're definitely not getting a first rounder. So no, no. Uh, maybe if, if you're if you're uh, selling for sure. Yeah, a couple more trades here. Uh, these are bigger deals, multiple pieces on both sides. C.D. Lamb, another player that uh, we could certainly argue is losing dynasty value. C.D. Lamb, Cam Akers, and Tyler Lockett on one side of the deal. Javante Williams, Brandon Cooks, and Hunter Renfro on the other. So you're getting what's viewed as that elite young running back in Javante Williams, a couple of reliable veteran receivers in Cooks and Renfro. Is that enough to move C.D. Lamb plus Cam Akers and Tyler Lockett? Yes, I like the Javante side in that one. Um, I think I just like Cooks more than Lockett. Renfro for Cam's kind of a wash. Javante for Lamb's kind of a wash, but it's close. And I think I'll take the dumping Cam side of that one. Yeah, I knew you'd take the Javante side. You've been uh, yeah, I'm pretty fond sharing of your love for him. We get it. Next one, George Kittle and Cam Akers for Zach Ertz a 2023 first rounder and a 2023 second rounder. Well, you already told us that you would take the second for Cam. So Kittle for Ertz and a first. I like that, that end of that yeah. deal. I, I think I'm taking Kittle's the stock Ertz isn't and the picks sore here. Either. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, Kittle is a big component of this, of course, and his stock's not going through the roof as we speak either. Um, Ertz would get you by at tight end and give right. me those future picks. Yeah, I want the picks. Yeah, me as well. Matt, when we come back, we'll take a look at those Twitter polls and see what the uh, rookie or what the running back rankings look like and where Cam Akers fell in that. All right. I've told you many times about betonline.net. Uh, it's the only place that I place my bets. Did pretty well this weekend. It's your number one source for pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season. Uh, find all the latest football league developments, matchups, news, podcasts, even a podcast, including this year's opening week's games and, of course, week two and all the ones going forward. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in all your favorite sports and events, including baseball, MMA, boxing, golf is huge on there, as um, so many other sports as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. We are talking Cam Akers and his dynasty value. We know it's falling. Just how far is it falling? I put a series of polls on Twitter uh, we got thousands and thousands of votes uh, all together on these polls, and we like to use the different polls, combine them, and essentially create a set of rankings based on the percentages in the results. It's not an exact science, but it works for us. And not only is it interesting to see where Cam Akers ranks in this, mat, but some of these other running backs who are certainly gaining or losing value, mm-hmm. uh, interesting to see them as well. We'll start at the top here with A.J. Dillon. Of all the running backs I included in these head-to-head polls, it was A.J. Dillon who came out on top 94% of the vote. So that was Dillon versus Cam Akers. Almost everybody wanted A.J. Dillon there. Uh, He played a larger role than expected, I would say, uh, for the Packers. And uh, look, his view is on the rise. Kind of interesting, the next two guys we didn't see in week one. J.K. Dobbins gets yeah, right. 90% of the uh, of the votes. Kenneth Walker, the rookie, gets 84% of the votes. So uh, maybe maybe Cam Akers w- should have just sat out in week one and his value <laughs> yeah, would not be point. falling quite as far as it, as it has been. I mean, Dobbins but is coming I, off a massive injury too. I mean, they're the same draft class. Could we be having this exact same podcast about Dobbins in a week or two? Well, I, I, I think there were concerns heading into the season. And again, we're just talking about a couple weeks ago, really. Right. But there right. were concerns about, about both of those guys heading into the season. And it feels like people were a little more worried about Dobbins. And maybe that was because right. he was not expected to play in week one. Um, but we can see now, value-wise, that that's, 
that would have been the way to go is to get, you know, get a little more rest, make sure you're ready. Clyde Edwards Hilaire had a good week one, scored a couple of times. He gets 79% of the votes. He uh, ends up fourth on this list. Leonard Fournette, the veteran, 75%. He didn't have a particularly good game. He was fine, uh, but nothing nothing too exciting there for the Bucks as their offense kind of struggled. Antonio Gibson, 64%. Tony Pollard, here's an interesting one. Tony Pollard, 62%. Mm-hmm. Ramondre Stevenson, 60%. So a couple of guys who are essentially still backups um, for their own team uh, get a get a big percentage of the vote. And, you know, I guess Cam Akers is a backup as well. So maybe that's, maybe that's understandable. Damian Pierce, 59%. That was a player that was definitely a disappointment in week one. Yeah. But he still pretty easily won the vote over Cam Akers. James I Conner, thought that would be that, even more lopsided towards Pierce. I know week one didn't do him any favors, though. Yeah, yeah. I, it, Same with Stevenson. Just, week to, one didn't help him. Either. Right, right, right. James Conner, uh, veteran, another veteran running back, also 59%. Notice we haven't gotten to Cam Akers yet. He, <laughs> he's, he's losing every one of these polls. David Montgomery, 55%. Acres teammate, this is the one I was most interested in seeing the results of. Acres teammate Daryl Henderson gets 52% of the vote, so uh, barely a favorite over Acres. Who do you and prefer? All of, uh, I still prefer Acres. I think I do too. I was never yeah. a big Henderson fan, and I don't trust him either. Of all of these polls, and there were there were close to a dozen of them that I created, and, and we got as I said, thousands of votes on Twitter uh, about Cam Akers was only chosen ahead of one running back. (laughs) I can't believe it. It was Ezekiel Elliott who gets just 48% of the vote. I knew, uh, I knew Zeke's value was down. I knew there were uh, definite concerns about his production. We see again, Tony Pollard got 62% of the votes. Yeah. Uh, Zeke gets just 48. So like I said, this is not an exact science here, but it's eye-opening though. It, it does make me wonder if we do a a Pollard versus Zeke vote, would Pollard actually win that? Based on this, I think he probably would. Wow, uh, both Rams and both Cowboys, Pollard would be number one. I mean, that surprises me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what this tells that's us. What's telling us, yeah. And I mean, he he feels like the player of the three who's who's gaining value, who has who mm-hmm. has a uh, you know a pathway or a runway to to actually gain some significant di- dynasty value. Uh, Elliot certainly does not have that. It, it's not looking good for Cam Akers right now, and and Henderson was solid in Week One, but I think he kind of is what he is. So yeah, exactly. Doesn't feel like necessarily a ton of upside there. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. That will do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to the Locked On Dynasty channel on YouTube. And remember to follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL, and I'm Ryan MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked On Dynasty.